हेलो एवरी वन नमस्ते नमस्कार मै सेल्फ श्याम एंड वेलकम विद सेशन लेट मी शेयर मै स्क्रीन वेलकम टू द सेशन वेन एनजिबल मीट सेम ग्रीट द स्टोरी ऑफ बिल्डिंग स्टेबल लॉकल लाइव सिमुलेटर फॉर्म I am Shyam, and I am currently working as a senior software engineer at Carousel Singapore. Originally, I am from a small, beautiful island called Perimbalam in Anapit District, Kerala, India. I am one of the co-founder of uh, Takila QB Community in Singapore. Yeah, you just you just heard it right. The pronunciation is same as the famous Mexican drink, but here Takila stands for Test Automation Quality Engineering Lab. I have created a Chrome extension for quality engineers called Relative Expert Helper, where you can find the Relative Expert expression of two web elements in two clicks. Uh, if you are interested, please check it out. About a little bit about Carousel, uh, we are Southeast Asia's largest online classified market, founded by Suray Lucas and Marcus in 2012. We are world's fastest growing mobile classifieds. Our mission is to inspire every person in the world to start selling and buying to make more possible for one another. I have a small poll for you. I just want to say I was just, I just want to know how much you uh, have tried the Selenium Grid. So you can go to the poll section and you can click yes or no option. I just want to understand the audience in terms of how much you know Selenium, whether you have any prior experience in Selenium Grid. So I can so you- give you thirty seconds for that one. Yep. Do you yes, find yes. the poll section in the right side where yep. you can go down and select the question have you set up try to set up the selenium grid. Yep. Um meanwhile you guys are voting then I can go ahead with uh, the agenda of the talk. So I will be ex- uh, sharing with you my experience as a speaker how did I start my journey also the problem statement uh, running UI test again against each pull request and why ansible is a good fit for a uh, configuring selenium grid how can we auto configure the hub and node setup using ansible how you can restart stop the apm servers using ansible and there is a small walk through and a demo and also we'll share the key takeaways and learnings So sorry to interrupt uh, yeah. since we lost 10 minutes in this so we might need to hurry a bit in the sure. uh, obvious things and we move sure, to the more yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so i can see from the poll uh, more than 80 percent they already tried uh, the selling in grid that's really cool to know so let's move on uh, i always want to speak at a major testing conference like selenium but i didn't have the enough courage or confidence to do it I wanted to get a breakthrough, and I have submitted different proposal fourteen times in various testing conferences across the world. And each and every time, I was getting rejection emails. I'm a big fan of Jim Morrison, and this is a this is my favorite quote by him. My first Selenium uh, conference experience was at Berlin, where I had a chance to attend the Selenium Grid workshop. I'm so honored and privileged to talk about the same uh, subject in the same conference today. While I was at Berlin, I was seriously thinking about appearing in the lightning talk session. I did submit my talk, but unfortunately, my talk was at the 11th position. The selection criteria was purely based on first come first serve basis, and I couldn't believe that I lost this golden opportunity to speak at Selenium conference. After six months, I had another chance to attend uh, one of the main conference called SOSCON 2018 at San Francisco. And this time, I was very much determined to give my first lightning talk. I was eagerly waiting for the submission board, and I managed to submit two proposals this time. But there was a small surprise. Instead of first come first serve, the selection criteria was based on the total number of votes by the conference attendees. and they announced that only six speakers would be selected from 23 submissions and well seasoned speakers like richard brashow jona the lips aran robin though they were already made their submissions and i was like oh boy you going to fail here too but yeah my real life clickbait title worked well this time and i have spoken about my relative expert chrome extension in sourcecon lightning talks 
that was the first time i was speaking in an international conference and it helped me a lot to regain my confidence i was feeling super lucky on that day and i decided to participate in a ping pong tournament at spin bar in san fran and guess what i managed to win the title and the first prize was an apple watch i decided to sell the watch on carousel once i came to singapore and i posted up that uh, all the money will be go to children's cancer foundation for charity and few days later one of my colleague bought it from me like this we believe that there are interesting stories would be happening with each and every carousel transactions uh, getting a chance to speak at a global international conference is not very easy uh, this is one of the main reason why takila is providing a platform for everyone to speak irrespective of the speaking experience last week we have done our first online conference called takila lightning talks 2020 where 15 speakers have spoken about various testing topics in 10 minutes each you can check out all the videos over here you can scan this qr code later yeah about the problem statement so in carousel so we have uh, the apps available on ios android and web platforms usually we do the nightly regression test and we were thinking about uh, running a subset of ui test around, that's around 20 existing critical ui test against each pull request one more criteria that we were looking for a way to was uh, get the test status within 20 minutes that including the build time in another word when a developer opens a pull request and going for a coffee break and come back after 20 minutes he or she should be able to see the test status on github that was one of the criteria so we call it fast feedback test because you need to give the feedback in a very faster way you don't need to wait till the nightly regression to get your result whether your your peer has broken any feature or not but our existing infrastructure was not capable enough to do it support this so this pic says it we had one mac mini connected with two android and two ios phone back then this one we have developed as part of an internal hackathon event so and there were a few more issues like people thought that uh, we have a new charging station and some people came to the test infrastructure structure and disconnected the usb from phone and charged their own phones so the challenges uh, we had here is the device maintenance like we had battery issues os dialog boxes then the connection issues wi-fi was disconnecting adb related issues x code related issues and definitely we needed for more parallel runs in order to bring down the total execution time also there were spiking up of peer so we needed to support each and every pull request and uh, we have releases on every friday which means we have a code freeze at 8 pm thursday the total prs will be spiking up before just before the code freeze because they needed to ship everything and make sure that all the codes in before 8 pm so we need to support that one also so what if multiple peers comes in the same comes on the same time you need to do, we needed to support each and every peer right so with only two phones it's not enough if you go ahead with uh, the cloud vendors also let's say you have purchased 10 concurrent session but what if four or five peers comes at the same time and all the last peer need to wait for all the other execution to be finished which may eventually result in exceeding more than 20 minutes so that against our acceptance criteria so that was another challenge and lastly which one should be used for test execution simulators or the real real phones yeah so some people uh, argue that uh, we should be testing on the real device always because none of the customers or clients are using uh, simulators in production or emulator uh, that's a debat debatable point but we are running when we are running our sanity test before the release we are running on our real devices but for fast feedback test we are running it on the simulators we decided to proceed with uh, tackle the ios issue first because we felt that that's the most uh, problematic one because there are already solutions available for web and android with docker containers this is how it gonna look like there will be selenium grid since most of you guys already know how does it work i will just quickly go through it 
So there will be a hub and Appium server will be running as node and it will be connected to the grid. And when we are instantiating a driver, we will be pointing towards the grill URL and it can talk to the Appium server. So the queuing will be automatically taken by the Selenium grid. The, there will be one one mapping between uh, Appium server and simulator, which means that if a MacBook, if in a MacBook, if you are using five simulators, there will be five Appium server will be running. Uh, this is how the grid configuration for Appium look like with uh, Selenium grid. So you can see that you need to specify the you know, on which port the Appium is running. Uh, you can add the UDID also along with this one the device name, the hub details, hub port, uh, hub is, if it is IP, the IP address uh, of the hub or such details you need to fill with the configuration. And you can, when you run the Appium server, you can pass it as a parameter so that Appium will understand, I need to register with the Selenium hub. And how you can automate this process? So how you can start a hub programmatically, start an RPM programmatically. Also, you need to create few configuration files for RPM. Is it possible to automate that one? Also, how you can start and stop RPM server on a, on a remote location programmatically? Because you don't want to do it manually. And sometimes you need to periodically restart the hub by nodes. How you can really do that? Is it possible to automate? Answer is yes. So Ansible will help you to some extent. So Shyam, yeah. uh, uh, maybe we can uh, skip through the definitions and move to the workings because we are uh, going late of time. Sure, sure. Yeah, I will handle. I will. I will go in fast. No problem. But no, no worries, Pooja. So Ansible basically it's an uh, open source configuration management and it's founded in 2018 by Michael D. Hunt. And currently it's part of Red Hat. Basically, it work, everything will be working based on SSH. I can tell you an example. Let's say you have uh, 10 machines with you and you have a use case like use case like every morning 6 a.m. all the machines should be restarted. So what you can do, you can set up this with Ansible and Ansible will, be, will have a hub and it can connect all the other nodes via SSH. And you can write your script for uh, restarting the machine at 6 a.m. So what the hub will do, it will send the command to all the connected nodes and it will be restarting at 6A. So this is just an example. So likewise, we can start Appium server and create the con node configuration, etc. cetera. Uh, this is a high level overview of how, this, the, how does the Ansible architecture look like. It has something called playbooks. It, it is plainly YAML files called, uh, yet it's a yet another markup language. And there is something called inventory file where you specify which are the IP address of the machines to be connected. And there are a few other stuff like there are inbuilt libraries like core and custom modules and plugins connection API. Uh, you can relate this with robot framework if you have worked on your robot framework where it purely worked on the key weights and there are standard libraries associated with it. I will show an example when you go through the demo. Uh, this is a comparison, quick comparison between Ansible Chef, uh, Puppet, and Solstruck. Uh, Ansible is a clear winner here in terms of uh, easy, easy of setting up and managing the uh, sources. And up to 10 nodes, it's free to use. And anyone can actually use it uh, without that much programming language. Why Ansible is a good fit of uh, quality engineers? The first one, uh, no agents needed, which means that in order to keep the connection, you don't need to install anything. Everything works based on SSH. The second one, it's idempotent. What is idempotent? Then operation is idempotent if the result of perform it, performing it once is exactly the same as result of performing it repeatedly without any intervening actions, right? So in terms of item potency, uh, Ansible will give exact result always. It's so stable. Another one, declarative index. And this is the main selling point of Ansible for us. So you everything work within uh, the YAML files. And it's just like what, like a plain English text. And it's easy to understand. And the learning curve is very low. 
and you can learn it uh, without any help. Also, a lot of uh, documentations are available online. You can just refer to that one and try it out. It's easy to learn. This is a typical example of how does an Ansible inventory look like. For example, we have two kinds of MacBook, one having 8 GB RAM and 16 GB RAM. And, and the last MacBook, we will keep it as a running the hub. And you can see that the IP address is already mentioned here with the Ansible username. So let's say, how does it work like when you are running a command, you can specify on which group of machines you need to run. So if you provide host as market, then that particular Ansible command will be running only on the machines where grouped as market. For example, you want to start the Selenium grid hub on a particular machine, right? So that come when you run that command, you just specify it should be running in the host as grid. So it will be running only on that particular machine. Uh, yeah, this is how a typical YAML file looks like. You can see that uh, this code I am using for killing an Appium server. What it's called, it will call a script called killserver.sh, and you can see the uh, what happens inside the kill server. So it will fetch all the process ID of the RPM and it will kill one by one. And you can see that this action will be happening on Mark 8 and Mark 16 uh, machines. So it's very easy to understand, right? And this is a high level overview of how does the architecture look like in order to set up the IOS simulator farm. Uh, you can see that, uh, yeah, so there are starting hub modules, starting RPM modules, killing it, and downloading distribution build because you need to, when you want to run a test against each pull request, you need to get the build for that particular branch. Then you need to pass that build to all the machines and then only RPM can take care of it. Then in order to configure the RPM nodes, writing a new uh, configuration file, also you can automate that one. And occasionally if you want to automate the JVM or the NDR Mac machine, that also you can do. So it's a combination of Ansible, IPM and Selenium grid. Yeah, this picture illustrates how did we set up the uh, MacBooks in our server room. So we had around six to seven MacBooks connected like that in our server room. One machine will be acting as a hub, and another one will be uh, all the all the other machine will be acting as node. Uh, let me share my desktop again, and we will go through a quick code walkthrough. Okay. Are you able to see my screen again? Yes. Okay, cool. So uh, the code is already available on the GitHub repository. You can check it out. So in this example, I am illustrating it as a local machine. I am not connecting to any other machine. Every code will be running on my local. And that's why I have connected that. It will be on the local host and connection is local. There is an Ansible configuration where you need to specify the path of the Python and the inventory file, we have already seen that one, right? So we're gonna call the setup.yaml file and uh, you're gonna call a role called selenium grid appium. So you can see there is a folder called roles and here you can see selenium grid appium. There are three folders here, default, file and task. And you can see uh, inside the task, there is something called main.yaml where you are specifying which all actions that need to be taken place. So what it will do, it will download the Selenium standalone jar first. It will configure the hub. It will configure the node. If the hub is running, it will kill the hub. It will kill the RPM. It will kill the grid. And it will kill. It will start all the RPM nodes again. Let's see what happens in download.yaml. These are the variables in Ansible. So you can see that all the variables are stored in default main.yaml. For example, Selenium jar path. I'm gonna download the jar file to this path, users shared server, okay. So you can see that insert the download. Uh, yep. So um, if the directory exists, then I'm not creating anything. Otherwise I'm creating a new uh, directory. Then I have the path for downloading the jar. Then I will be downloading to that particular folder. Uh, in the main.yaml default, 
folder has the version need to be no allowed, allowed to be given you can check it that you can check it that out then once it's downloaded it wait it will retry 100 times so within two three retimes times it will be finished so the jar file will be downloaded the next one uh, happens in the main yaml configuring hub right so you know that you need to create a json file in order to configure that one in the template folder you can see this will act as a boilerplate you can see that you can pass this variable to this one so the corresponding port will be created already hard coded for 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 us the local host port so it will try to create a new json file for the hub configuration and you can see how does it look like so there is ansible has something called template so it will pick up the source hub.json.j2 and it will try to create a hub.json in the given path same for the apm so you need to create uh, the apm uh, nodes that one you can do by uh, calling another task called configure apm yaml and i am passing two loops here so you can relate this like a while loop and i am passing few parameters the phone name which port the apm need to run what should be the wda port and the os version so you need to make sure that you have a simulator should be in your machine and it should has that it should have the name iphone x with the os version 12.0 so what this script gonna do um, configure a pm mac yaml file it will call the instruments command and it will list all the devices and it will pick up uh, the corresponding device name with the os version then it will try to get the udid of the simulator from the expression because you need udid in order to register the apm nodes that will be added to the configuration file and it will be created and there are if you look at the node.json.js there are a lot of uh, expression that need to be replaced that what happening in the rest of the steps so it will add all the other configuration and it will try to create two apm json files for one for iphone x and another for iphone 8. once we do that uh yeah before that we need to kill the apm right if there is any existing apm session is there for that one i am calling a shell script called kill apm dot servers you have already seen that in the previous slide so that part i am giving in the file folder okay and you can see that one so it will be killing all the existing apm session and in order to re rerun the apm session i am calling another shell script so it will be calling the apm in a screen basically i'm using screen because um, i want to run it as a background process so screen is like a virtual uh, terminal so if you call a command on screen it will be uh, running uh, as a background process and you can see you can just type screen command to see which all screens are running and you can provide uh, the a log file to be generated so that all the pm uh, log file will be generated locally then i am passing the node configuration because when we call the command the node, node config file will be already created here in the node path and i'm passing the callback port and the pm port over here let's do a quick demo uh, are you able to see my terminal hello puja can you see the terminal yes i can see cool thanks yeah so i already down, uh, checked out the Pro ansible project here so the command you need to run uh, ansible playbook set up yaml and you specify the inventory dot time so let me run this one and see what happens so it will start this and it will try to download the jar file first yeah so yes the directory already existing so i'm not creating and i will be downloading that one then it create the hub notification hub configuration file then it trying to find the udid of the given uh, phone uh, simulator that's iphone x and iphone 8 then it will replacing uh, the node configuration files based on the configuration that we are providing and you can see that i'm printing the udid of the device you can see it over here then it will check the second phone the same actions will be happening here Yeah, it's replacing all the boilerplate components. And I'm killing the existing Selenium grid and Appium server session. So it killed uh, the 472 for 472 and started to Appium session and done. 
so let's go to the yeah server folder so you can see that the hub uh, json file has been here it's generated and the node config device with port name 4724 has been created yep and let's see the con content of this uh, node configuration file Yeah, so you can see that the browser name is iPhone X, the device name, the UDID I'm passing. If I already passed UDID again, then application name, PM node name, then the URL to hit, the host, etc. So I've already given all these parameters in the uh, as a variable. So it will be creating the PM nodes, PM nodes over here. And let's see whether it has came here or not. We can check localhost. and two uh, nodes are registered here and you can see that the iphone iphone uh, x is here and iphone 8 is here now you just proceed as usual you just call this uh, hub url with your driver instantiate and you pass the capability as the udd capability here so uh, the uh, uh the web driver will be uh pm driver will be trying to uh check whether this udad has been registered or not and it will try to execute on particular simulator okay going back to the slide let me share it one more time okay cool so we got last 10 minutes okay. yeah five minutes to wrap up and five minutes question eh? sure so customizing the selenium grid you can see my screen right yeah so uh yeah so we have a strategy like one node equal to one simulator and uh we have got we can we can we could see that you can run up to eight simulators in 16 gb uh Mac, 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 RAM, uh, ram machine and we are using different rpm servers for each node and in order to customize it, we have used the custom capabilities and gets custom satellite. I'm not going to the details of that one. You can uh, check this blog grid over there shown by uh, Krishnan Mahadevan. I have visited this blog multiple times when I was working on the on this project. So uh, thank you, Krishnan, for writing this awesome blog. It helped me a lot. The challenges we face. Uh, so downloading and distributing the test build uh, because we needed to get the bill for each and every PR and what we have done, we have added this to a GCP packet and again we downloaded the corresponding build to each machine. You can upload it to a centralized location and tell APM to fetch it from there, but it's quite time consuming. APM will be more faster if you were APP file on the same machine. Then periodic, uh, oh, sorry, handling multiple runs at the same time. So this one need more parallel session because there will be multiple peers will be coming on the way and we needed to handle that one also. So periodic restarting of APM servers. Yeah, because sometimes it get frozen and you needed to restart the APM server in order to make it correct again. Then there were Wi-Fi issues, like sometimes the Wi-Fi was disconnecting and we are not able to run it further. So we need to handle such issues. And after, the COVID situation, this became very painful, like uh, we needed to debug it from outside the office network. And we have connected the VPN machine to the hub so that we can uh, connect the Mac machine from home. And we needed to get the screen recording, that one we solved using the APM's default recording option. Yeah, moving to the key takeaways and learnings. Um, Ansible is very easy to learn and you can use it without any prior experiencing in programming language. And it's easy to set up and maintain it with readable YAML files. And it's truly a QWERBS tool, and it's easy to configure Selenium Grid with Ansible. Yeah. I think you can just uh, ref refer these links for in order to learn more. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, really, I really feel great to get this opportunity. I really would like to thank uh, my colleagues at Carousel and Abhi, uh, 
Jerry, Long, Nan, Eva, Tiger. So thank you for all your support. Thanks all all my mandates. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Sham, and and uh, it's a lot about great and answerable, and it's it's about more about its perspective, like what can solve your problem, not getting attached to one thing, and then doing the problem thinking problem solving at the core and then choosing what is right for your case that thank that's a that's a good takeaway i would i would take from this uh, session so thank you we have a few questions in the q and a mm -hmm. um maybe we can have a look at them sure so there is a question from harshita okay about how to run one test case in all the platforms yeah that's a good question so ideally we should keep we, we are on multiple platforms and uh, keeping uh, different test cases for multiple platform they are not an option for us so what the team has done uh, we are we have a single test cases to support multiple platform like let's say we are using java with uh, cucumber framework so we have a base class and the subclasses for each and every platform so we are using page object pattern and for example uh, we have a login page okay so imagine the login is implemented differently for android and ios so what you what you can do you can create a subclass for android and a subclass for ios in order for the login page so depends on which platform you are running the test uh, that class will be instantiated and the method in that class will be overridden so that's how we have done so basically we went ahead with uh, writing all the subclasses for different platforms so that in abstract level your cucumber uh, bdd will be scenario will be looking same but it has got a different a different implementation according to each platform i hope that clears your doubt yeah next question we have from shrikan how can you manage the execution of execution time of our critical test where login test is prerequisite oh okay yeah that's another good question let's say uh login is something um, you're gonna do for all the test cases like and uh, the question is like since this is a common uh method can we exclude that one we have tried that one so you can do something called deep link and when you start the rpm uh, you can provide that this is the username and password that I supposed to call using this deep link and instead of uh, Login using the UI you can directly go to the home page So you can implement that one if you want to save some time. So it will help you. Let's say You have 20 test cases and the login step take three to five seconds and which means that you are saving almost uh, 60 seconds right for uh, for for a single execution time single run of execution so you can do that it's uh, technically this is possible yes yeah so next question thanks sham next question yeah. we have is shall we rely on simulators or use real devices mm, i mean um, like i mentioned earlier that's a debata debatable question right so what I personally believe, you don't need to run all your tests on the real phones. But if you have a specific use cases, like let's say a camera. So at Carousel, uh, we are working like something called Snap List and Sell. So where you need to take the photo of a product and you need to list so that buyers can check with you, chat with you regarding uh, whether, I mean, regarding the price and lighting condition, et cetera. So you cannot do this with simulator. So such special use cases also, it will be nice to test it on a uh, real device during the sprint when you are doing exploratory testing, but mm, not every time, especially at least for running this fast feedback test. I don't think it's necessary to run it every time on the real device. Yeah. Uh, next question we have from uh, Sharat. In parallel testing using grade, should we config each node with UUID? Um, yes, ideally, uh, why I have mentioned this because um, UDID will be help you to uh, navigate your test to a specific simulator. For example, even though there are multiple simulators are available, um, you would like to run your test on a specific device. So you are telling your framework saying that, hey, I want to run this 
particular test on this particular simulator rather than picking up the random data. So in that case, UDID is very much helpful. Yep. Okay. And the last question we have is we can take um, from Harish. Can we trigger the test case from Windows machine to run test on the Selenium grid in Mac? Uh, can you trigger the test case from Windows machine to run the test on grid on Mac? Okay. Uh, let me tell this one. So like, and like when I set up the Ansible, so I did it on MacBook. So Ansible I need a hub machine. Then hub machine will be talking to all the other nodes. The hub machine need to be either Linux or Linux based machine or Mac based machine, but the nodes can be Windows based machine. So your question is you can, when you call uh, the test, you can use the Windows machine, but where the where you are running the FPM, it needed to be on a Mac machine in order to, uh, in order to run the simulators. You can install the MacBook on a virtual box, but nothing is guaranteed because you need the Mac hardware in order to get a uh, hundred percentage certified working yeah yeah so we come towards the end of the session so thank you so much sham 